it all starts with a question. What makes this different from this, different from this? I'm Peter, and this is Stacks and Facts. This is a book. It has a title and an author, a front and a back with pages in the middle. These pages are likely have words and maybe pictures too, but you already knew all of this because books are everywhere. For a long time, books have been a dominant form of maintaining the human record, and through the years they've picked up some common attributes like the ones I just mentioned. And yet, those few things are just the tip of the iceberg, the preface, if you will, to how we describe them and other objects produced by human agency. When we're talking about the metadata of books, we have a ton to work with. How we choose to describe a book can totally depend on what we plan on doing with it. And how you describe a book may be totally different from how I describe it which is fine. Of course, when we're talking about describing books, especially within the context of library and information science, we usually mean describing them for many people, not just for you or me. That's why cataloging, or the process of creating metadata that represents an object, is an entire field within librarianship. Catalogers work behind the scenes to make sure that the books in a library are described in a way that, ideally, and I use that word with intention here because what we expect isn't always what we end up with, ideally makes the book findable by those who are looking for it. They do this by using a cataloging standard, or a set of rules developed so that different objects in a collection can be described consistently every time. Cataloging is really interesting and important, so I'll definitely talk about it in another video, but right now, I want to talk, and hopefully you want to learn about books. So how do we describe a book? Generally, there are two categories that a descriptor can fall into, physical and not physical. That is, you can describe the book as an object, and you can describe the body of information contained within it. Physical descriptors might include, for example, its format, so whether it's hardcover, paperback, or an ebook or audiobook, its dimensions, so its height, width, depth, and even its weight, and its materials, is it made of paper, leather, cardboard? Whereas non-physical descriptors might include its subject and the themes it tackles, the language it's in and the country where it was published, and biographical information about the author and other people involved in its production, their names, genders, backgrounds, and interests. Of course, having this information is all well and good, but what does it actually do for you? The most obvious answer is it lets you find things that you're looking for. So let's say that I'm a librarian and my library's community just experienced something really bad, like a natural disaster. My library already provides weekly story time for children as part of our regular programming, and we want to help our community recover. So this week, I decide that I want to read a story to the kids that talks about fear, disasters, and feelings in a way that helps them process their own experience. Why? Because my library serves a community where poverty is a daily reality. I know that my patrons are often the least likely to have access to adequate mental health resources, and in times of disaster, that access may be non-existent for a long time. Without having to read all of them, I can make a list of books for exactly this purpose simply by looking through the subject headings and brief descriptions. I can pick one to read at story time, and then the others I can refer folks to who want to read things like it too. As an aside, if you find yourself in a situation where you have a child in your life who's struggling with all of the bad news in the world today, I would recommend The Rhino Who Swallowed a Storm by LeVar Burton and Susan Schaefer Bernardo with illustrations by Courtney Flesher. Uh, I put a short description and a link to its World Cat entry in the doobly-doo, which will let you find a copy at a library near you. So go check it out. Okay, aside over. You can also use book metadata to understand society at large that the book came from. Fun fact, Wikipedia has 79 years of the New York Times bestseller lists as articles. Looking at the metadata of all of these books for these years could give a sense of what people cared enough to write about, and how that's evolved over time without us actually having to read them. Not that you can't read them, I'm just saying, uh, take a while. What questions would you ask with that kind of information? Or what information would you rather have? Let me know in the comments below, and maybe I'll answer them. Now, so far, I've only really talked about using non-physical book metadata, but I want to wrap up with a mention of what we can learn from the book as an object, because I think that that's pretty danged cool. Professor Eric Quackle came to UBC a little while back and gave a talk about this idea, basically looking at a book's physical structure to determine its purpose and origins. This is an extension of what's known as socio-technology, or the idea that technology and society shape each other. This is different from the idea that societal demands only dictate technological development, or the other way around, but not both. 
I'll give two examples that Professor Quackel used that stood out to me. First was how uneven page sizes in medieval manuscripts give a hint towards their purpose. Uneven pages were used to save cost, and so we can imagine that the folks who brought these books either didn't have tons of money, say university students, or didn't really care about the book's appearance as much as what was in them, like tradesmen. If we know that a book was written for a university student rather than a professor, for example, that can give us context for what we might find in the book, say notes in the margins or doodles. Plus, have you ever thought about where all the white space in the margins of textbooks come from? Because it wasn't always there. It's no coincidence that that's where notes get scribbled. A second, books are heavy, y'all. So if you have two copies of the same text, and one is significantly lighter than the other, then maybe it's designed to travel to and from the dorms rather than to stay on a lectern in a classroom. This might inform us about the location where the book was found. So it's interesting to keep in mind the idea of weight as a design aspect has historical precedent. So that's part two of my mini series on metadata. I think that book metadata is super interesting and has a lot of unexpected uses. And I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below or tweet at me, at StacksFacts. Thanks for checking this out, and until next time, don't forget to ask questions. All right, bye.